everyone, it's Kristen, and today we're going to do another art journal page in our Dina Wakely Blue Edition Media Journal. It looks just like this, and it's Blue Edition because it has these blue denim pages within it. But we've got it open to an all-white spread. This is beautiful watercolor paper, and this is actually the center spread of the book. And today we're just going to play. We're going to paint, we're going to do some mark making, and just really have a lot of fun doing some abstract work. And because a lot of you suggested that you liked the voiceover in the last video, we may do a little bit more of that as well. So that's what's up today, a little art journal play. As always, thanks for coming along. First things first, let's protect the pages below the ones we're working on with anything really, but I used palette paper because it's gonna get messy. Starting with the Bria Reese watercolor inks. I have orange and magenta, and as you can see when we add water, they blend beautifully together. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to smoosh the book together for the old butterfly action. And there we have a quick and easy beginning. Now I'm pulling out some gesso and acrylics will follow that to really start the layering process. And that's what this project is all about. It's about playing. It's about layering one color on top of the other, about blending and playing with art supplies. A lot, a lot of art supplies will be used here. Right now I'm feathering the gesso into the ink so we don't have a big cut and dry portion of where the paper and the ink meet. And then I'm reactivating the ink with a little bit of water to continue to have that blend. Now we're going to start adding colors. This is Golden's Acrylic in Teal, and I love this teal color. I think it's one of the prettiest on the market. And as you can see, I'm just popping it in places. A little here, a little there, adding water if need be. And even if I create a color that I don't like, like I just did there on the left, no worries, we can always fix it later. It's all about experimentation and play. Now I'm adding a medium colored pink. I love the way this pink plays against that bolder, brighter magenta ink that we started with. And I like how when added to teal, it's creating a little purple and we're gonna add more to it. Now on to gouache. I love gouache. Gouache is great because if you want a subtle color, you can add water to it and it acts like a watercolor. But if you want to keep it in its bold, natural state, just leave it alone. This is an opera pink and it's not too neon, but it's really bright. It's a lovely color. And as you can see, as I'm adding it into the teal, it too creates kind of a purple. And when you add it into the orange, we're working with a little bit of a coral color. And I'm just going to continue to blend that pink until I'm kind of done with it. And I'm ready to move on to a different color, which in this case is purple. Now I'm putting the purple on top of the areas where I've already created a purple with the blend of colors so that it really is harmonious. I want color and I want it bold, but I really want it to blend together. Now, I love these colors too. I'm going to say that about everything. I'm a supply junkie, but I love these Arteza iridescent acrylics. They shine, they create a different texture than the matte paints will create. So not only am I looking for a variety of colors, but I'm looking for a variety of finishes. It's going to be really interesting in the end and hopefully really dynamic. Now the color that I'm choosing now is another favorite. This is an iridescent pink, but it looks white. It just has this gorgeous shift to it and it too creates this shine that you won't get with a matte acrylic. When I need more gesso, when I need to blend the colors, I just add a little bit with water until I'm happy with the results.
Now that I'm happy with the blend of colors I've got going on so far, I'm going to throw more on that page. And this time it comes in the form of a high gloss color shift paint from Folk Art. Now this paint is similar to the one that we just used from Arteza in that they both have a color shift quality to them, but this has a higher gloss finish. It's extra shiny and that's what I'm going for. Again, that variety. And the reason in general why I like to use metallic paints or color shift paints or anything with a different texture is because it really makes your eyes dance across the page. Speaking of dancing, I'm like a kid. I have my big old colored pencils out and I'm just scribbling. This is the mark making section and we're just going to add color when and where we feel like it. This is about the play. But now, a little bit of strategy. I'm adding a dark neutral color, little scribbles, little doodles for a variety of things and colors on the page. Now don't roll your eyes. You've seen this doodle many, many times from me. I'm taking my white gel pen and I'm creating a pattern on the page where there wasn't one before. I do this doodle often. It makes me happy, but it's also kind of like a stall tactic. When I don't know what to do next, I start doodling. And I love this one because it's easy. You're simply connecting shapes one to the other. You're turning the page if you need to, and you're flowing that pattern from one side to the next. So I'm going to continue to play here. I'm going to add some white doodles to various parts of the page and then I'm going to go on and add a little bit of doodling with a pink glitter ink and that blue that you see there on the bottom. Now back to that big bold colored pencil and I'm making more marks. Little squares, little scribbles where I see fit just to add more layers. And that's what I love about layering one thing on top of the other. When you do, the things below peek through. So I'm going to continue to play and now I'm going for that color. I'm pulling out the Jane Davenport Brights watercolor set because I want that particular color which is called ink. Along with the black colored pencil, I want to add some depth now with deeper colors. And I love the way this bold ink color pops against all the brighter, more vibrant colors on the page. But what was happening? Okay, now I'm really getting bold. I'm pulling the color down and I'm creating streaks on the page. I did plan that. I wanted that. I wanted to get a little grungy with it, and that's how I chose to do it. When I need to pull that drip down, just add a little water or tap the page. So now that I've got my grunge on and that ink color is dry, I'm going to pull out some neon jelly roll pens and I'm going to use the shape of the drips to my advantage. And this is when we start to pull the background into the foreground by using the shapes we've already created and doodling within them. In this case, I'm doing a little stripey action all the way up that drip with a neon pink. And then I'm going to do the same with a neon orange before adding a little glitter. Desert Island item alert, the Jelly Roll pen in Stardust. It's a glittering ink and I love how it blends colors together as well as creates that sparkle. So I'm going to do a little bit of that and then I'm actually going to color. I've got the Neo Color 2 crayons. These are water soluble which means if I add a little water to them they will act like a water color. But I also like the way they look just as the waxy crayons they are. So I'm going to 
put several marks on the page with a variety of colors. Wherever I have a blank spot, I'm going to add something else. So I've got that acid green, that beautiful blue, and that gorgeous teal, as well as some bold yellow. Then I will add a little bit of water on a brush to blend some of the squares together, but some of them I'm going to leave as they are. And just when you think we may be done, you know, we're still adding color. This time in the form of a yellow ink by Bria Reese to create some warm sections on the page. And this is really the first time I'm being careful with my placement. I don't want to ruin some of the marks I've already made. And because this is a wet ink, I'm really taking my time and making sure I'm not going into some of the marks I want to save. Because next, we're going to use those sections to create even more drama with a gold metallic paint pen. You'll see me blot it on the other palette paper. What I'm really doing there is getting the ink to flow. And I'm going to spread this pattern throughout the entire two pages. Now that I've gotten this far, I feel like it's still missing something. So I'm going to go back in with that white gel pen and continue with my doodling and making those patterns. But again, this time I'm being mindful of the section I'm in. I'm going to use the marks and the doodles that already exist on the page, just like I have here with these little gold dots, and I'm going to work around them. Now we've got layers peeking through and everything looks really purposeful. In addition to that, I'm filling up the page. Now the colors on the page are really coming together, but I wanna start incorporating some of the gold that I've already applied with a metallic paint pen in the form of those little dots. I wanna marry the colors together. I want there to be a seamless consistency throughout the entire spread. So I'm taking some gold gesso from Daniel Smith. I'm feathering it in with my fingers for a little subtle blend, and I'm adding it all around the sides of the pages. When adding that gold gesso, I lost some of the marks that I want to keep, so I'm just going on top and adding them back. And this is the same thing that we were talking about earlier, using layers one on top of the other so that they continue to peek through. And now, the glitter ink. This is another Desert Island item. It is one of my favorites. It's very subtle. Hard to see on camera until it's dry, but I'm adding glitter wherever I can. I'm feeling drippy. I want more drips on the page, so I'm taking this 
pearlescent liquid acrylic. It has that dropper that's so good. And I am taking it from the top of the page and encouraging it to move down. And now don't think I'm crazy. Well, you may think I'm crazy, but here we go. I did worry that I might be ruining something, but then I remembered you really can't ruin anything in an art journal play, especially when you're just experimenting and having fun. But I did want some more drama, and that came in the form of black ink. Now, I really have a grungy component to my bold, bright colors that are spread throughout the pages. And now for the scary part. I'm gonna be bold though, I'm gonna be brave and take a black acrylic gesso around the entire two pages. I wanna create a frame that makes everything within it pop. So I'm blending the edges with my fingers and I'm going to create a really organic shape. Now, if you're the type of person to journal on your art journal, then taking a white gel pen and spilling your thoughts on that black gesso might be a great way to approach it. But today, I'm just going for the color play. I just wanted to play with supplies and colors, and I really want to make the inside sing. And that will complete our page. We have literally thrown all of the supplies at the book, and I had a lot of fun doing this. It was fun, it was freeing, and if you try this yourself, please let me know. Can you imagine how great this would look on a canvas? But I'd love to see what you do. Thank you for coming with me, for listening to me babble on, and I'll see you soon. Until next time.